and me and Drizzy, our relationship most definitely is real close. And Ross is just one of those people I've never had to worry. I've never had to like question what he's gonna bring. From being best friends and making hit songs together. Nah, the, the love is genuine. Ross is like one of my OGs, one of my mentors. And Drake even calling Rick Ross his favorite rapper to work with. He's my favorite person to rap with on any song. His name is Rick Ross. That's my brother. To Rick Ross betraying Drake in a time where he needed his friends the most. Yo, Drake in the club looking like he might do the Thanos snap, man. Get rid of half the rap game. The longtime duo of Drake and Rick Ross are no longer friends, and their beef has gone personal and flat out disrespectful. Every song that made it on a chart, he got from Jizzy. That's why you had operation to make your nose smaller than your father knows. Why would Ross beef with Drake, though? If Rick Ross and Drake are not rapping together no more, this hurts. But the question is, why did Rick Ross betray Drake? The story begins in the year 2009 in Miami, Florida, where a young Drake first met Rick Ross, and little did they know, they would leave a mark on hip hop forever. Drake first met Rick Ross through his mentor Lil Wayne, as Wayne was in the studio working on music with Rick Ross. Uh, I was at maybe the next time or two I was in the studio with Wayne, I met him. And it was just genuine, he was just a cool young nigga, you know what I'm saying? You just seen, just wanted to win. At the time, Rick Ross didn't know too much about Drake. And the craziest part about how Rick Ross heard about him was that one of his girlfriends told him Drake was talented. I was actually kicking it with one of my She was like, yo, Drake is so yo. But she was a cool fly chick, so I was like, play, play some of his music. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, he fucked away, okay, that's... In the late 2000s and early 2010s, Miami was a rap hotspot, as Rick Ross and DJ Khaled were making their mark on the industry with their debut albums Port of Miami and We The Best. The two would go on to produce countless hits during this run, like Hustlin' and All I Do Is Win. Not to mention, working with some of the biggest rappers in the game, like Jay-Z, Kanye West, Lil Wayne, Jeezy, Fat Joe, and even getting legendary singers like Akon and Neo on their songs. And if you remember this Miami era, when you heard Akon and others on a song with a group of rappers, you knew it was going to be a banger. But what Drake didn't know was that collaborating with Rick Ross and being in Miami would change his career forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I, I don't know how much music we got. Drake and Rick Ross would go on a legendary run, making music together for over 10 years. One of their biggest songs, Stay Scheming, was one Rick Ross didn't even originally plan to have Drake on. I had just pulled the beat up. Me and French Montana was sitting in the studio just vibing. Drake walked right in. Damn, that's dope. My nigga, do your thing. But the hits didn't end there. They would appear on hit songs I'm On One, Aston Martin Music, Made Men, Lord Knows, Gold Roses, No New Friends, and even recently with hit songs Money in the Grave in 2019 and Lemon Pepper Freestyle in 2020. Drake and Rick Ross's relationship wasn't just business either. The two have always spoke highly of each other. Ross is like one of my OGs, one of my mentors, and one of my favorite people in the game. It's so easy working with the homie. I'm going to be honest, we in the two percentile when it come to writers and creators. Mm. And even when Drake was doing his best to end Rick Ross's artist, Meek Mill's career, Rick Ross still didn't say anything negative towards Drake. And I feel like really by Meek Mill being my little brother and Drake being my little homie, I really feel like they was two little homies that was in high school on the way from school and fought over a pair of J's. <laughs> Although some will argue Rick Ross had bars for Drake during this time on a song called Color Money. Color Money got your on the world tour. My little homie made a million on his girl tour. Is that a world tour or your girl's tour? Meek and Drake made up in 2018 and Rick Ross and Drake's business and personal friendship went on like nothing happened. And funny enough, just four months before the Drake and Rick Ross beef began in 2024, Rick Ross and Meek Mill spoke on Drake positively. And yes, Meek Mill and Rose, we f the boy heavily. You might hear more than some of this new is coming out very soon, you heard? You better believe it. And if we look at it even closer, as latest as January of 2024, two months before Rick Ross turned on Drake, their friendship seemed as strong as ever. Like one of your favorite songs with Drake? Stay Scheming, I'm gonna say Stay Scheming. Came out in the streets, it came to us. When we put that record together, it was one of those vibes. 
So that was most definitely magical. So Lemon Pepper is your favorite wing? Favorite. Yeah, is that so that's why when you and Drake did that song, he had to have you on there with Lemon Why Pepper. not, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the biggest. Yeah, of man. course. Why not? It was super dope. But only a few weeks after Rick Ross spoke highly of Drake, their friendship changed forever. On March 22, 2024, Metro released an album called We Don't Trust You with Future. Even the title sounded like it could be towards Drake, and well honestly, it was. The album included many disses towards Drake from Future, as well as Drake's other known enemies, Kendrick Lamar and The Weeknd. But what we didn't expect to see was Rick Ross appearing on this album and picking Drake's enemies over him by also unfollowing him on Instagram, seemingly after Metro Boomin tweeted to pick a side. And this caught everyone by surprise. If there's no beef between them, why does Ross unfollow Drake? If Rick Ross and Drake are not rapping together no more, this hurts. But Drake wasn't about to mourn the loss of his friendship and got to business by responding in the most Drake way possible, giving Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend the OVO experience at his concert only a few days later. Look at this. She's at Drake's show. Showing off Drake, but she could have just bought a ticket, right? Who knows? Maybe she just bought a ticket. You would have thought so. Except you see it here. The OVO out with her name with three underneath it. Drake gave her three tickets. Drake, you slimy, bro. Rick Ross and his ex girlfriend, Christina Mackey, were in a public relationship for about six months, ending in early March 2024, only a few weeks before the Rick Ross and Drake feud went public. The two were seemingly pretty happy, spending a lot of time with each other. And to Christina's credit, she said that it was a peaceful breakup with no hard feelings. But if we're being honest, her and Drake knew what they were doing by having her at this concert and posting about it, as they used each other to get back at Rick Ross by trying to make him feel jealous or disrespected. Drake is a slimy man. Yo, I'd be damned if me and you got songs together and we mans and you give my ex-girlfriend tickets to your concert. You giving her special tickets that she could pull up with an OVO owl letter or, or like thing with the tickets in it that she go to a private entrance feeling all special? Nah, bro. And after seeing what Drake had done, Rick Ross decided to go even further and responded to this by posting a video on Instagram, listening to Kendrick Lamar's feature on the album We Don't Trust You, where he was dissing Drake. But Rick Ross wasn't done there. He then posted a bottle of Bel Air, tagging Metro Boomin, Future, Kendrick Lamar, and Drake in order from top to bottom. And of course, he had Drake on the bottom. He captioned the title, Official Bel Air is really like that. And he singled out like that because that was the name of the song Kendrick Lamar dissed Drake on. But the Instagram play fight was over and Drake and Rick Ross were about to get dark and disrespectful. On April 13th, 2024, Drake's diss push-ups leaked online. It's here! It's time! God damn! Holy! Ladies and gentlemen, this is a shot that will be heard around the f world! And he responded to everyone attacking him, including some heat for Rick Ross. In this line, Drake is referencing to the fact he invited Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend to his show, and he uses the phrase, cover like I'm Ricky, as a double entendre saying that he might cuff her like Ricky in a dating way, as that's another term for a relationship, as well as cuff her like an officer of the law, as Rick Ross used to be a correctional officer. Drake then makes a crucial statement, referring to the fact that a lot of Rick Ross's hits are because of him. Every song that made it on a chart he got from Jizzy. Out of the three top 10 hits Rick Ross has, all of them include Drake. Money in the Grave by Drake featuring Rick Ross. Lemon Pepper Freestyle by Drake featuring Rick Ross, and I'm On One, produced by DJ Khaled and features Drake, Lil Wayne, and Rick Ross. And things didn't end there. Spin that little check, you gotta stay up out my business. Here Drake says that Rick Ross isn't on his level money-wise, and to go worry about himself. And in the leaked version of this song, Drake had actually said something else as well. And this is possibly referring to the rumors regarding Rick Ross hanging out with Diddy. And as we all know, Diddy is in a whole situation right now. But again, this didn't make the final version. 
And after this diss track leaked, everyone was going crazy. But only hours after it surfaced, Rick Ross dropped his diss track called Champagne Moments in response to Drake. Let you get on my songs. It was. Oh my god. It's real. It's real. Oh. In Rose, he wasted no time getting disrespectful and personal on this track. Ghost writers, they get the floss, what you could have had. In the first line, Rick Ross is referring to Drake always being accused of having a ghostwriter. That my strongest talent is writing. That is my strongest talent. I'm not a great singer. Uh, I'm a great, I'm a good performer. I've grown into a great performer. Um, but my greatest talent is writing. And the ghostwriter accusations stem from 2015, when funny enough, it was Rick Ross's artist Meek Mill who said it first. Yeah, this caught us all by surprise. So uh, late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, Meek Mill got on Twitter. He accused Drake of using a ghostwriter. Rick Ross also said that with all of the money Drake's probably had to pay these ghostwriters over the years, he could have kept it for himself had he just wrote the songs. Record label taking a loss, are you in your bag? He then makes a reference to Drake's label OVO Sound. And when you look at OVO as a whole, besides Drake, the next best up would have to be Party Next Door. He was hot in the 2010s and very talented, but he's taken a long break since. You were working on the chart. Don't make me laugh. He then references Drake is still signed to a label in Universal and is making them money in an employee way. And Rick Ross, well, he's the boss of his own label, MMG, which has had successful artists like Meek Mill and Wale. But Rick Ross wasn't done there, saying that Drake's career is in decline, even though many consider Drake to be the best in the game still. Living fine, I'm getting high, it's your sh decline. And looking at Drake's last album for all the dogs, some didn't consider it to be Drake's best work. And Drake did take some heat for it at the time, but it still sold 402,000 units, debuting number one on Billboard in its first week. And the year before, in 2022, his album Her Loss with 21 Savage received a ton of positive support and sold 404,000 units, debuting number one on Billboard in its first week once again. Run up on you and snatch your chain, watch you bleed. In this line, Rick Ross is pretty direct with what he's saying, but it's also in response to Drake, as on his diss track push-ups, he flat out said nobody is taking his chain or anyone in his cruise, which in translation means nobody is touching me no matter how disrespectful I get. And at this point, it's safe to say that Rick Ross isn't playing with Drake, but he was just getting started. He continues by saying that the next time they see each other, Drake better keep this same energy. If we keep in the gangster, when you see me, you check me. Hinting to the fact that Drake might try to be friendly in person, but will continue to be disrespectful online. But if history has shown us anything, Drake nor his team are afraid of confrontation in person if something happens. Allegedly, of course. That's Chris Brown showing off a nasty gash he got in a fight in New York last night. Now, who do we have to thank for this? It was Drake? Ross then insinuates Drake is soft. Like his moves, but he never had a fight in school. Which many people have tried to say over the years, as Drake didn't necessarily have to grow up the same as other rappers. And this is because he was an actor on a popular Canadian TV show called Degrassi, as well as he had other opportunities growing up as a kid. I took him to this agent, uh, and she really liked Darby, so he did print work, and he did a couple of commercials. But Drake has said before that his upbringing wasn't as soft as people like to claim, as he grew up poor and lived near Weston Road in Toronto, which wasn't a nice area. Weston Road flows back when we couldn't buy pizza because we were down to pennies. But Ross wasn't letting Drake off the hook yet, and also said that his flow is copied. Flow was copying your pace, Weezy gave you the juice. Which over the years, Drake has been accused of. Oh, you taught Drake everything he know. Y'all ain't hear Drake on his first song. Tell me what's really going on. Drizzy Drake back in his thing already. What's that? That's oh, Soldier. Shit. That's oh, my bar. Shit. He copied my oh, whole shit. Oh, shit. Word for shit. word, bar for bar. And again with XXX Tentacion. So he plays this. I hear da 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 my da. I'm like, what the f as soon as it started, like I knew, I knew he was getting that. Feel me? So they were saying that Drake was biting your style. <gasps> Flow, hell yeah. Bro. Ross also said that Lil Wayne gave Drake the juice, referring to Lil Wayne mentoring and teaching Drake the game. 
and this definitely did help Drake, but plenty of rappers have also had opportunities from big artists, and they haven't touched Drake's success. Let you DM my old, but got beat Kane. And as we expected, Rick Ross responded to Drake regarding him giving his ex-girlfriend Christina Mackey the OVO experience at his concert. But now Rick Ross is about to get crazy, saying things nobody expected to hear. Rick Ross insinuated Drake got a nose job to make his nose smaller. That's why you had operation to make your nose smaller than your father knows. And it's so specific, it makes you think that there's something to it. But you have to be the judge. Because if you look at these two comparisons from back in the day and to now, it really does look similar to me. Rick Ross then says Drake owes his career to Birdman, Lil Wayne, and the Prince family. You old mother son of your life, nigga. Get Wheezy some more money, nigga. Get Rap a lot some more money, nigga. He's referring that Birdman and Jay Prince co-signed Drake as family, giving him a certain level of protection and credibility, which is a Canadian actor turned rapper really needed. So let me put these bully niggas on notice by letting them know Drake is family. Got nothing but love and respect for Drake, bro. Jay Prince Jr. also found Drake and actually brought him to Lil Wayne. And on a rap level, Wayne's wisdom and cosign took Drake farther than he's ever paid Wayne back for. Rick Ross and Drake then went back and forth on Instagram, beefing over the alleged nose surgery, and Drake even posting a text from his mom asking him about this. And Drake said if he did, they could have got a two for one. Rick Ross then went on a tirade trying to provoke Drake, saying that his plane is old, and he continued with the hashtag BBL Drizzy movement, saying Drake has had work done. I got one more question for a BBL Drizzy. One more question. How long you gonna stay on that plane? It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's a 1978 cargo plane wasn't built for humans. It's dangerous. Imagine a white boy with the soul plane. God! Drake responded to this by saying Ross's house isn't what he makes it to be, and the two kept going on over who was richer. But even with all this back and forth, we still haven't answered the question that needs to be answered. Why did Rick Ross betray Drake? Why would Ross beef with Drake though? The answer to this question isn't that simple. Despite Rick Ross actually telling us on his song why he unfollowed and turned on Drake. I unfollowed you nigga because you sent the mother teaching to sister French Montana. But is this actually the real answer? Was Drake allegedly sending a cease and desist to French Montana all it took for Rick Ross to throw away such a strong and long-lasting friendship? Or is Rick Ross hiding while he actually turned on Drake? When you look at it, many of Rick Ross's hits are from Drake. The biggest artist in the world said his favorite rapper to work with is Rick Ross. He's my favorite person to rap with on any song. His name is Rick Ross. That's my brother. They've publicly been friends together for almost 15 years. Nah, the, the love is genuine and it's been like that for since he came in the game. Two months before Rick Ross publicly turned on Drake, he spoke highly of him. Yeah, is that so that's why when you and Drake did that song, he had to have you on there with the Why not, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the biggest. Yeah, of man. course. Why not? It was super dope. When Drake literally almost ended Rick Ross's artist, Meek Mill's career, he still didn't have a beef with him. They was two little homies that was in high school, fought over a pair of J's. <laughs> so anyone saying Rick Ross is just being a good friend to French Montana, I'm not buying it. So again, I ask you the question, is Drake allegedly sending a cease and desist to French Montana the only reason Rick Ross threw away such a strong and important friendship seemingly overnight? Or is he using this as an excuse and hiding the real reason he betrayed Drake, such as secretly not liking him for some time? So believe me, we're going to talk about what Rick Ross might be hiding, but first, let's investigate the reason Rick Ross gave us for him turning on Drake. French Montana released his album Mac and Cheese 5 on February 25th of 2024. Now as far as we know, Drake and French Montana have been on great terms, as they have good songs together and there hasn't been any reason to publicly assume they're beefing. So why would Drake send a cease and desist to French Montana to prevent him from using something of his? Well, there are two possible reasons. Drake featured on a song called Big Pun with French Montana, and it was rumored to be on Mac and Cheese 5. Yeah, I got a song with Drake called Big Pun. Mm -hmm. Yep, we, we, we do got that. That one, that one um, I'm in the tuck. 
What about the um, Shot the Drake? Uh, a snippet of this actually came out in early 2023, and another snippet was again leaked later that same year. But the reason this song is important is Metro Boomin apparently produced the beat for this song. So it makes sense that Drake would not want this song released, because he doesn't want to help Metro at all with their beef going on, even if it comes at the expense of his friend French Montana getting a feature. Because let's be real, a Drake song is going to make a lot of money, and that's going to go right in Metro's pocket. But even though this makes sense, it might not be the actual reason. It seems that Drake was originally on the song Splash Brothers that appeared on Mac and Cheese 5, as the original version had been leaked and originally delayed from being on French's album, they got amnesia in 2021. And on Drake's verse that got leaked, he takes serious shots at what seems like Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. On MMG, I'll F a rapper's wife. She ain't even my type, but I'll make the sacrifice. Now looking at the first line, Drake is pretty straightforward, and yeah, that could be about anyone. But where Ye and Kim come in is when he says this. People know the real, secrets left in hidden hills, bought the whole street up and got it for a deal. In 2018, Kanye, Kim, and Drake were all neighbors in Los Angeles, literally living down the street from each other. And if you remember, it was speculated that Drake had relations with Kim Kardashian. Drake released the song In My Feelings off his album Scorpion in 2018. And after that, everything went crazy. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? I just found out who Kiki was. <laughs> Kiki is your That's why you're so mad. Drake, you're a cold <laughs> That's who Kiki is for real? The fact that it's people making rumors or thinking that you fuck my wife and you're not saying nothing and you carrying it like that, that don't sit well with my spirit. So when you're like, oh, I don't know where it come from, you're too smart for that, bro. On the song Sicko Mode by Travis Scott featuring Drake that came out just a few months later, Drake may have also described directions to Kim's house. And keep in mind, Drake literally lived around the corner. And I crept down a block, made a right, yeah, cut the lights, yeah, paid a price, yeah. And Drake clearly confirms he was dissing Kanye at the end by saying checks over stripes. Checks over stripes, yeah. Referring to Drake being sponsored by Nike and Kanye Adidas. In 2020 on DJ Khaled's song Grease, Drake talks about those hidden hills and someone's wife. And Kanye, well he had a lot to say about this. You got bars, it's like hidden hills, give your wife the chills. You doing all kind of, it's like you, all that's disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? So you could be sitting there like, did he, did he not? So looking back at this alleged verse that was apparently supposed to be on Mac and Cheese 5, when Drake is talking with a rapper's wife and secrets in Hidden Hills, it seems very possible he's referring to Kanye and Kim. So for strictly argument's sake, if French Montana was trying to put this on his album and Drake didn't want it coming out, which is very understandable for numerous reasons, Drake would have had no choice other than to send a cease and desist to prevent it from happening. But crazy enough, French Montana was asked about Drake not being on his Mac and Cheese 5 album, and his answer might surprise you. Yeah. So what happened with Drake on the album? Because I know you and Drake made, made a lot of music, you said. What yeah. happened on, the, on this project? Yeah, yeah, we did, but we got the documentary coming out in June. Mm -hmm. And um, he executive producing it, so we're just going to push the records back to that. <laughs> why, did, why didn't you put the Drake song on here? Because I saw people were saying, what happened to that? Um, Because we got a documentary coming out together, and I feel like it's a better look that we dropped. You know what I'm saying? Okay. French Montana had nothing bad to say about Drake, and Drake has literally been helping him produce a documentary in which they will apparently have a collaboration on Musical.ly in 2024. So according to French, they're in a great place. And this is French Montana, the person Rick Ross is allegedly defending, saying this. Could he be hiding the fact that he's mad at Drake? Possibly, but they're still supposedly working together on stuff. So even though this alleged cease and desist to French Montana is apparently the reason Rick Ross unfollowed and turned on Drake, does it actually seem like the real reason? To me, it doesn't. And I think the real reason could involve Rick Ross secretly having hate for Drake long before he turned on him. Or he's mad that Drake didn't give him and Meek Mill a feature on their album Too Good To Be True, which came out at the end of 2023 and seems like they are banking on. Greatest of all time, Drake feature. And yes, Meek Millie and Rose, we f with the boy heavily. You might hear more than some of this new sh that's coming out very soon, you heard? You better believe it. And now, 
Rick Ross is using this alleged cease and desist as an excuse to go at Drake when it's convenient. Drake has given Rick Ross so many of his hits, so even if he didn't like him for some period of time, it made no sense for Rick Ross to start the beef, because one, you're going to dry up musically pretty quickly. Two, starting beef with Drake isn't very smart because the odds of winning a beef with Drake are 50-50 at best and you are losing the biggest artist in the world as your friend. So it made no sense for Rick Ross to start beef with Drake and that's why even a couple months before the beef went public, Rick Ross was still talking positively about Drake. But all of this changed in March of 2024. It's possible Rick Ross saw what was happening with Metro Boomin, Future, Kendrick, and The Weeknd teaming up on Drake. So he saw his opportunity to show how he truly felt about Drake without sacrificing his musical success or even his popularity. As he's teaming up with Future, one of the best rappers in the game, and Metro Boomin, the best producer in the game. Unlike if he were to do this before, when it wouldn't have been a very trendy thing to do, and he would have been doing it all alone, unprovoked, without the French Montana excuse. Because ask yourself this question, if this rap civil war wasn't going on, would Rick Ross have gone to war defending French Montana? I doubt it. He didn't even do it for his own artist Meek Mill when his career was on the line. So even though Rick Ross told us why he turned on Drake, and we have our answer, do you think he's telling the whole truth? Either way, it's sad to see a near 15 year friendship filled with great memories and hit music end the way it has, especially because everything happened so quickly and it got so personal. But one thing is for certain, Rick Ross and Drake will never be friends again.